the news back here in Chicago, where Chicago police are taking lessons learned in Pittsburgh to help control crowds here for the upcoming NATO summit. Now, police plan to use what is called a long-range acoustic device to keep crowds from getting out of hand. ABC 7's Paul Mikey has more about the device and what worked and what did not work in Pittsburgh. It is a story that is new tonight at 5 o'clock. Cheryl, the G20 summit in Pittsburgh in September of 2009 has been called the most peaceful of modern-day global summits. There are doubtless many reasons why arrests and property damage were minor compared to other host cities. Police say their intelligence paid dividends. Some protesters say the city purposely dragged out the permitting process for marches, making it tougher to organize. And there's also Pittsburgh's layout, a compact downtown that, come summit time, was filled with riot control police. My initial thoughts were that there would be a lot of violence, there would be a lot of security. There was indeed a lot of security. Pittsburgh has a police force of around 900 men and women, so for summit duty they recruited officers from other law enforcement agencies, including Chicago. There were protest marches, some with permits, some without. The largest was a march across the downtown bridge, within sight and sound of the G20 meeting. The overriding message from the thousands involved was spend less on war and more on human needs. So people were very angry and outspoken about that, but, but we were not there to fight with the police. There were no clashes, no arrests in that march, but there were other confrontations. I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. Pittsburgh used what's called a long-range acoustic device for loudspeaker dispersal orders, followed up by high-frequency, potentially painful, audio chirps. Pittsburgh's use of the LRAD was the first time that machine has been used in the U.S. for crowd control. I'm not going to talk uh, much about the LRAD because we are in litigation over it. Um, we did use it as a tool to get the order to disperse messages out. There are still unresolved lawsuits over Pittsburgh's use of the LRAD and other arrests that protesters say took place without provocation. But the total number of arrests was less than 200 a mere fraction of what other G Summit cities have seen, and property damage was minimal. From a policing standpoint, Pittsburgh has a couple of things that naturally worked in its favor. It has hills and it has rivers. Bridges near the convention center were closed. The immediate security perimeter and beyond were well fortified. The Strip District, just outside downtown, was the announced target of some demonstrators, but they never got close because the river's on one side, and on the other side, a wall of police was in the streets. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, April 16th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channel is ddarko2012 and 2013. So, this is lessons learned. Lessons learned in, uh, in a review of basically clamping down on peaceful protesters. Uh, one of the things that they failed to mention was the abductions of people off the street, protesters. Uh, they didn't mention that. They didn't, also didn't mention how the uh, police department um, was uh, infiltrating some of these peaceful groups and actually inciting violence. Yes, that's right, so that they could actually clamp down so that, uh, you know, they can keep them under, keep them under control, as they said in the beginning. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter if these things cause people to go deaf. Uh, we have this right here. Uh, MU professor first to sue over long-range acoustic devices. So they're going to roll these things out in Chicago, of course. Remember before I was talking about how they actually canceled the summit in Chicago due to the amount of um, protesters that they were expecting. So they were going to actually move it. But now I guess it's go. And you had uh, Rahm Emanuel, the dictator of uh, Chicago, uh, just basically spending a lots of taxpayer monies that they get from city stickers and uh, all the other uh, basically scams that they have to steal people's money there in Chicago, and they're going to use it on uh, riot gear and stuff. So, but uh, yeah, but it basically goes on. It says since '09, this professor Karen Piper has suffered from what her doctors say is the same type of hearing loss that can accumulate naturally over time. Hers, however, was not caused by age, but by an acoustic crowd control device used by Pittsburgh police at the G20 summit and protests in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 
So she's actually, uh, she was working at a, some kind of fellowship at Carnegie University. She said that she wanted to go down to the protest, and uh, basically she's writing on global financial institutions and water privatization. She goes, I decided to go down there just to see what was going on. I was hoping to get a pictures of what protester signs said. And then she goes on and says it was just a bunch of people standing around peacefully. They were just ragtag group of kids. Of course, the provocateurs were in there as well. Uh, but basically it goes on there and it says that she said officers began corralling protesters between a truck bearing the LRAD and tear gas. She asked the police what route she should take and they pointed her directly in line with the LRAD. The sad thing uh, is, is that there wasn't any warning and I didn't know it was permanently in, uh, injuring me. And so, you know, uh, talking about permits, that's just a big another scam game that they play that uh, you actually have permits and then they revoke them and they say, uh, well, we don't really care if you have permits. Um, I think it was one of the Occupy in Oakland uh, video that I, I was watching live stream. And uh, what they, it was another little gimmick that they did. They actually took the protesters and they herded them like they were doing with those Elbrads. They herd groups of people. Some in, in England they call them kettling and that. But they move her, uh, people like herds of cattle. And they, and they were basically running from the cops because they were firing all these flash grenades and stuff like that at them. Until eventually they were just trying to get away from them. They went into a building trying to go through it. And what did they say? Oh, they were occupying the building, and they weren't. But then they, what did they do? Mass arrested all of them. So just wait till they bust out the pain ray gun. That's right, when they start shooting microwaves at people and see how they feel after that, especially people with heart conditions and that, uh, you know, are, ep are more prone to be um, to have seizures, you know, ep uh, epilepsy. So and they don't care. They don't care because then what? They'll just take other people's money that they've stolen, like I said, through, uh, you know, um, stupid city stickers, a little sticker that you have in Chicago that costs almost $100 now, or, you know, uh, taxes that they, what is it, $10 for a pack of cigarettes in Chicago, at least $10 now. Uh, all that taxes, oh, that will just go towards all the lawsuits that, uh, they, you know, all the harm that they carry out on people, right? Because they don't care. They treat you as cattle. So, moving on here, Hillary Clinton promotes 22nd century NATO ahead of Chicago summit. So, it says on April 3rd, Secretary of State Clinton addressed the North Atlantic Treaty Organization Command and the United States Allied Command Transformation, the Allied Command Transformation, and the World Affairs Council of Greater Hampton Roads. And it goes on here against the backdrop of the annual Norfolk NATO Festival. On the same day, one day before the 63rd anniversary of the founding of NATO, she also spoke at the Virginia Military Institute in Lexington. So this article was from April 11th, just so you know. In Chicago, she said, we will discuss uh, the form that NATO's enduring relationship with Afghanistan will then take. So uh, they're talking about bases. That's what they're getting at. But moving on down here, she goes on and that uh, two other points or goals were to update NATO's defense capabilities for the 21st century uh, to cement and expand our global partnerships. She said these were the three that were identified as goals for Chicago. Says here, to prove this point, Washington and NATO's allies, she stated, are collaborating on a new alliance ground surveillance system which uses drones to provide crucial intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance information to our forces. And in Chicago, we'll decide how to use this system as a hub for joint operations. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. I'm going to keep moving. Tax refunds being used to pay for bankruptcy filing so some Americans spend their taxes on high-tech gadgets and long-awaited vacations, other user cash to file for bankruptcy. So almost a quarter million uh, money-strapped households will use their tax refunds this year to pay for bankruptcy filings and legal fees, says a new study by the National Bureau of Economic Research. It goes on and says it's been especially true since the cost of bankruptcy soared after the U.S. bankruptcy laws change in 2005. And it says and many more families have been forced to delay filings until they can afford to pay the fees. And, of course, this helped out. I think Biden actually helped uh, draft the law in 2000, another law in 2008, 2009. and made it harder for them to do this. Uh, but basically what, what it did do is it helped banks like Bank of America um, not disclose this in their – and basically their books and their little reports, their number games that they play, their little number shell games. And so it made them seem as if they were still um, up and running. I guess they call it solvent. So, But they made a lot of money out of, out of it too while they should have went under. So, But uh, it says here IRS tax auditing lags for ultra wealthy, so it's not really much of a surprise for most of us. But a new IRS team looking at business activities of the ultra wealthy have missed its own goals reviewing only privately held company and 10 partnerships in 2011. Yeah, so it basically goes in there and says, oh, it's a failure and it just didn't live up to the expectations. Well, 
okay. <laughs> so they're just going to get more money to expand it, and they're going to clamp down on small business owners, right? It says here, half of U.S. mail facilities no longer needed. It says study. Again, not really a big surprise. Uh, it says here, man locked in house, burned to death, and foreclosure eviction shootout with cops. I remember this over the weekend. So a man uh, being evicted from his house and sh uh, shot a deputy and a locksmith and then locked himself inside and was later burned alive after police grenaded the house for an hour. Look at those cops, man. I remember when I saw that, dude. Those are police. Those aren't military troops. Those are cops. Yet people want to say, oh, we don't have martial law, all right? I mean, what do you, what do you need to see to to see that it, there already is martial law? The police are already militarized. Okay, so this will actually tie into what we were just talking about. It says here that the Modesto Beaver was reporting that uh, the property had fallen behind on payments on a fifteen thousand dollar oh Bank of America mortgage that was taken out in two thousand three. So the property owner also appeared to have defaulted on thirteen thousand owned to basically uh, uh, the condo uh, association, which tend to be like Nazis. So, you know, it says here, executive order federal government to take control of domestic natural gas production, EPA set to move within a week. So we already know about uh, Codex Alimentarius, and we all know about this that was recently passed, which was National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order that was recently signed. So either way, like I've mentioned this before, the government's been able to do this during times of war. So take over the... Um, energy sectors that in the industry but it goes on and it says that it actually has to do with uh, regulations uh, for fracking which they don't really mind and they do treat those that uh, are protesters at fracking as insurgents so that's how they view you and manage you like cattle if you do decide to um, protest them for it so it says here uh, UK should raise retirement age to save crippling economy. This says the IMF has called on the British government to raise the retirement age again in a bid to save the country from financial ruin, i.e. siphoning off of wealth from generations of generations of hard-working people into smaller, smaller hands. And they don't care. They don't care if you can't feed your kids. They want their fees. They want their money. They want their interest. Suicides by economic crisis increase in Europe. So it goes on there and it says that... Uh, that basically it's a disturbing trend that Europeans committing suicide over their financial woes in the light of the economic takeover. Again, siphoning, they call it a crisis. Greece, Ireland, and Italy are particularly uh, troubling. The suicide rate among men increased more than 24% from 07 to 09. Ireland saw suicides among men rise more than 16% in the time same time uh, period. In Italy, suicides by economic crisis uh, have risen 52%. So... And in Ireland, they're actually uh, trying to, what, uh, recommend putting lithium in the water. So maybe they'll take their ass drilling a little more uh, passively. So it says here, Federal Reserve Banking System. You can go through the list and see, but Rothschilds, of course, again, no surprise, are at the top of the list. Soros, if Germany persists, Europe is over. So it basically says that it's all Germans, Germany's fault um, that all these other countries are heavily in debt. And he goes that uh, basically this couldn't have been anticipated as far as the euro breaking down where many people, uh, analysts, said that the euro and that EU is not going to work. But hey, ask Ireland now, who's being asked to pay property taxes and that. So so come check out this site, uh, Essential Intelligence. Does Israel leverage Europe? Seems like a pretty good blog here. But it goes in there and it uses a term called uh, Eurabia, basically uh, bringing Arabian countries into the EU further to the financial entrapping of Europe. The EU authorities, which answer only to the global money powers, not only to sovereign nations, have decided to step up the Eurabian process by means of forcing hundreds of millions of uh, Levantine and Maghreb Muslims on the remains of European nations. And we have this uh, exclusive Turks to get same rights in Europe uh, economy as EU residents. So Brussels bringing Turkey into the EU under the radar. Their detailed plans to extend the same rights to Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Croatia, the former Yugoslav Republic, and Israel. It looks like the Eurasian Economic uh, community will grow into the Eurasian Economic Union. That's right. It says here that the leaders of this Eurosec to discuss post-Soviet integration in Moscow. Barroso, the EU to China, EU is not falling apart. China slowdown is bad news for Europe. March import prices up by most in nearly a year. And Uzbekistan seems about broke, where news is that teachers and doctors in the district of Bukhara province have been paid in a portion of their salaries in the form of chickens. And doctors in Uzbekistan say that they're running a secret program to sterilize women. And a woman interviewed says big family is a definition of personal success in Uzbekistan. 
But after her second daughter, her second child, she went on and said that uh, basically she had been sterilized and not even known it. And speaking to a doctor, she actually said that there's strong pressure on doctors in rural areas of Uzbekistan where there's a quota of four women per month. But in Germany, they're actually paying people to have children. So it just goes to show you how messed up it is.